stop. It's a... Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Delightful to see you all here. This is going to be a bit odd going like this, but I'm sure we'll get used to it. I love this team. OK, I love this team. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. MJ Hibbert. Hello. Hello. Final night of our London run. It's been a heady two days. Uh, so, uh, I, and I'd like to introduce uh, the, some would say the, the star, or especially the co-star of many of those days. Uh, please welcome Mr. Stephen Hewitt. <laughs> we're here this evening to introduce our keynote speaker, Sir Wilberforce P. Hartington, B.A. Arts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Don't, don't panic. You can still. <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, I'm here to tell you the secret story of the greatest hero that Earth has never known. <laughs> so, prepare yourselves for the secret story of... Moon Horse, Moon Horse, the greatest hero Earth has never known. Moon Horse, Moon Horse, standing sentinel but never alone. Saving the planet with his human companion, Jeffrey Livingstone. On my way to work each morning, I oh it gets better than this. On my way to work each morning, I often stopped and wondered at the lack of dead people lying around. Oh, so well before you giddy ghost, what are you going on about? Well, you might be moved to ask. I will respond to that with a simple story of a heroic act unmatched in human history. And it went a little something like this. Ye gods. <laughs> we had a bigger table in there. <laughs> Ye gods, my arch enemies, the Mars men of Jupiter, have developed a plan to kill every single living being on Earth and its immediate environs. No, no, no! Foolish Jeffrey Livingstone! Only life on dry land! Otherwise we'd die too, wouldn't we? You pillock! Well, I did wonder, but how does that help you? <laughs> I'm in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to die dryly, Jeffrey Livingstone! Start the cat down! <laughs> no. oh, 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 goodness! Oh dear, oh! Oh! Jesus! Well done, Moon Horse. You've scared him out of the bath. <laughs> <laughs> he did a big moon poo in the bath water. Stop the countdown, Marsman of Jupiter. There's no time to run another bath now. Bah! <laughs> By moon poo defeated. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that Moon Horse. That bath water smells rather nice. What have you been eating? <laughs> What's that? Cinnamon, frankincense, and wild orange oil. <laughs> And that's how they invented lush bath balls. <laughs> All thanks to Moon Horse, Moon Horse, the greatest hero Earth has never known. Moon Horse, Moon Horse, standing sentinel but never alone. Saving the planet with his human companion, Jeffrey Livingstone. I wonder if you've thought about how awful it would be if we were all made slaves of Satan. you <laughs> it could simply never happen. You might say, but you've been mistaken. You see, we were merely taken into his dread domain. But a pair of heroes were there to save the day. And it went a little something like this. Ye gods, Satan himself has developed a diabolical, literally diabolical <laughs> to destroy the earth. <laughs> we may possibly have lost a, lost a prop and have to buy a new one today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, the banish from the earth and forced to wear this. I am still free to stalk the moon, from whence I can hurl my latest devilish, literally, devilish <laughs> device to earth, thus! <laughs> Why, you equine idiot! You can push and shovel your life, but my Mephistophelian, literally, Mephistophelian, <laughs> makes her, she has already landed on earth! <laughs> and in your own United Kingdom to boot! <laughs> you fiend! Literally. <laughs> what have you done? There's another harder than they're telling you now. My Mephistophelian. 
Mixer, she mixes together her current location with that of hell itself. They, 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 they mix. <laughs> and, but I wonder, where can it have landed? What luckless postcode is now located in hell itself? <laughs> what? No, what have you done? Turn it off! Turn it off! Stupid Lucifer. Moonhorse deliberately knocked your device off course to send it to the one place on Earth worse than even hell itself. Birmingham New Street Station! <laughs> it's okay, Lucifer. We'll help you turn it off. But there'll always be a small part of your satanic realm that is forever in the Midlands. <laughs> and that's how they designed the Selfridges building. <laughs> All thanks to... Moonhorse, Moonhorse, the greatest hero ever has never known. Moon paws, moon paws, and he sets it over never alone. Saving the planet with his human companion, Jeffrey Livingstone. Saving the planet, moon horse and his companion, Jeffrey Livingstone. But how, you must be wondering, can it be that nobody has ever heard of them? Join us now for episode one. The secret origin of Jeffrey Livingstone and Moonhorse. <laughs> Our story begins in the heady days of 1965, when a young Jeffrey Livingstone is greeting a very important visitor at the secret headquarters of the British Space Agency on the Isle of Wight. Yes, I'm delighted to have you all here, here at the um, British Space Agency, and I'm very much looking forward to introducing our special guest for today, our current Prime Minister, Harold Wilson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Alan, young man, tell me, young man, what is this uh, gigantic uh, tube contraption that you're building? Yeah. Well, sir, this is Project SABBGATM. SABBGATM? <laughs> Shoot a bloody big gun at the moon, sir. <laughs> and uh, this is the bloody big gun in question, is it? Very much so, sir, yes. We're going to put a man in a capsule, pop him in the tube, Fire it at the moon and see what happens. I see. And uh, have you run tests at all? Or, um... Not really, sir. No. This is the 1960s. We thought we'd just have a go and see what happens. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's have a go. Let's have a go. What's the worst that can happen? We're gonna get someone shot off of the planet. We could do tests, but to be honest, I don't think anyone can really be bothered. We built an air pistol to shoot at the moon. We're gonna fire it this afternoon. Will it work? Well, yes, we think that it should. Seemed like a good idea in the pub. Let's have a go. Let's have a go. What's the worst that can happen? Um, you might miss and hit a different planet. Yeah, but we, we reckon it'll all be good. I'm pretty sure the spaceship won't blow up. We'll need an astronaut, though. Who'll volunteer? I'll have a go. Well, well then, Jeff. I'll get you a beer. Do you mind being shot out of a gun? Not at all. That's my idea of fun. <laughs> let's have a go. Let's have a go. What's the worst that can happen? Sure, you'll love it on a different planet. Well, technically, it's a satellite. Whatever. I can't be standing around here all night. Let's go. Five, Five four, three, two, one. Fire! Shanklin, we have a problem. Space has made me come over all funny. Shanklin, it's like being on the water. I've got a strange sensation in my tummy. Jeffrey, this is Shanklin. We've spoken to the medical department. Jeffrey, they've informed us that there should be some pear drops in the glove. <laughs> oh, yes, that's much better. Next stop, the moon. Touch wood. We had a go, we had a go, and by George it worked. We had a go, the first Englishman to leave planet Earth. We had a go, just one little thing I, I meant to ask him. What's the plan for when you want to come back? Oh, bugger. I knew there was something. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, never mind. I'm just going to pop off now and go and see our President Lyndon B. Johnson. I'm sure he'll be able to help us out. Howdy! I'm President Lyndon B. Johnson. <laughs> oh, I say, is 
not a uh, cowboy hat you're wearing there. Indeed it is, sir. And as I am a native Texan, it is both justified and historically <laughs> accurate. <laughs> well, uh, well, Mr. President, sir. Uh, Call me Tex, Harry. <laughs> Uh, oh, Tex, uh, I must say, I'm, 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 I'm very much looking forward to working <laughs> Me too, Harry, me too. We're going to have a very special relationship. Hands across the water is how it always ought to be for you and me. I'll be your buddy. I'll be your chum. We're going to get a lot of foreign policy done. We're going to have a special relationship. Up, up. Special relationship. Well then, remember Macmillan and JFK? Hey, those two cowpokes got along okay. But we'll go together like a pair of pants. Why, Mr. President, <laughs> would you care to dance? <laughs> Whatever else happens when it comes to tap, We'll always be almost equally crap. We're going to have a very special relationship. Our respect will be mutual. Our entente will be cordial. Always within international law. Hey, that's what the rule of the law is for. We're going to have a special relationship. Bop, bop. Special relationship. Bop, bop. Special relationship. Yeehaw. President, and I'd like a bit to wonder whether I might be able to ask you a small one of <laughs> Shoot, Harry. <laughs> you see, um, we've got ourselves in a little full of bother, you see. Um, we've just sent a man to the moon, you see. Uh, You've done what? I know. Good, eh? <laughs> you galloping galoot! We're spending billions of dollars building a massive military-industrial complex to send a man to the moon. If they find out there's a goddamn limey up there, the whole thing will be ruined! Oh dear, well then, 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 then maybe we could just uh, keep it a secret. Oh, well, until we can build a rocket to fetch him back, of course. Fetch him back? Not on your Nelly, my friend. This is outrageous. How can we justify spending all that money? Oh, I know. I mean, it's not like you can just pretend to go to the moon, is it? <laughs> what was that now? <laughs> I, I said you can't just pretend to go to the moon, can you? No! No, we definitely could not do that. Absolutely not. Right, I'm off back to the US of A now, and fully intend to be at loggerheads with you for the entire rest of my presidency. Oh dear, I is that historically accurate as well? You betcha. <laughs> We're gonna have a very difficult relationship. Like Elvis and the Beatles, we're gonna meet infrequently, you and me. We'll go together like a sandwich and ants. And that here in the North Atlantic, oh I am. We're going to have a difficult relationship. Goodbye, sir. A difficult relationship. What well, thanks. A difficult relationship. That's President Lyndon B. Johnson to you, as wife. <laughs> And poor Jeffrey dooms now to die, alone and unknown. Why, it's the futuristic sound of the galactic <laughs> Hello, hello. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. It's me, Jeffrey Livingstone. I've landed safe and sound on the moon. Good Lord, that is marvellous news, lad. Thank you, thank you. I'm sure everybody down there is really excited to hear about my exploits. Um, oh, yes, yes, very much so, very much so. Poor lad. If he must die, let him die thinking he's a hero. Yes, yes, we're all very pleased. Well done. Very good, very good. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> That's marvellous, sir. I'll just... Hold on. What's this? It looks like some kind of tin man. <laughs> Greetings, flesh creature. I am the total intergalactic destruction droid of death. <laughs> But you can call me Tiddy, Tiddy Tiddy. Will you be my friend? Well, yes, I suppose so. At least until I can get back to Earth, anyway. Wonderful, you see. It's been so lonely on the moon. But now that's changed, cause here is you. We'll be such 
friends. The business friend. You and me forever. We will uh, we will watch Sloppy 50s films and then have scrabble tournaments. We'll be such friends. We'll be such friends. We'll have some fun together. We will map midnight raids upon the fridge. Teach each other bridge. We'll be such friends. We'll be such friends. We'll part us now and never. We'll do each other's hair and maybe one day put on a play. Put on a play? <laughs> Just the two of us? That's ridiculous. I don't know. Think of it might work. Think of all the jigsaws we will make. All the cocoa we will drink, all the homemade chocolate cake, you will never, ever, ever want to leave. Let's write it on the kitchen calendar for our anniversary. We'll be such friends. We'll be friends. You and me forever. We'll be you and me in wholesome homemade fun. Living on the moon, it will be great. It all sounds great, and no means of escape. No, no, the Johnny Jakes will never end because we'll be such friends. You're my best friend. <laughs> so, just me and you on the moon, then, is it? Yes, just you and me. Diddy, diddy, diddy. Just you and me and moon horse. Moon horse? What, uh, moon horse? Oh yes, sir. Quiet chap. Last survivor of the ancient race of star beings known as moon horses. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they were a horse race? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds great. Wait till I meet him. Oh uh, well, may maybe later. But first, how about a game of boggle? Or perhaps I could meet Moonhorse now? Oh, very well. He, he's over in the Moon Stables, just past the Moon Gym Carna. I'll go and put the kettle on for some hot chocolate. Thanks, Tiddy. Wow, a Moonhorse. He must be amazing. I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> Hello there. You must be Moonhorse. I'm Geoffrey Livingstone. I'm sure you and I are going to be great friends. <laughs> What's that, Moonhorse? What's that? It's the interstellar alert. The Mars men of Jupiter are invading and only you and me can stop them. Excellent. <laughs> this sounds like a job for Jeffrey Livingston. Jeffrey Livingston and Moonhorse. Moonhorse. Defending the Earth from invaders from outer space. With our Moonhorse beside me protecting the human race. If another dimension decides to attack, we can bet on our lives that we're gonna hit back. Fighting on behalf of the whole flipping human race. Jeffrey Livingston, Jeffrey Livingston, and Moonhorse, Moonhorse. With Moonhorse, my faithful steed, we're a two man or six legged fighting machine. If a sentient planet decides where it's lunch, we're gonna find some kind of face. Attacking, you'll be answering to him and me. Jeffrey Livingston, Jeffrey Livingston, and Moonhorse, Moonhorse. Come on, Moonhorse, let's go get him. <laughs> Jeffrey, it's Chucky O'Clock. I've got pickles. <laughs> Jeffrey! 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 Blimey, Minkos, that was an amazing adventure, wasn't it? Oh, hello there, Teddy. You were gone for a long time. Well, yes, you see, we've been having this amazing adventure. Hot chocolate. Oh, thank you. Ah, it's gone cold. <laughs> yes. Yes, it has, rather. Nay! <laughs> What's happening, Horse? Put it in the microwave. That's a brilliant idea. I think you and I are going to have hundreds and hundreds of amazing adventures. <laughs> and hundreds and hundreds of amazing adventures is exactly what they did have over the next 45 years. Jeffrey Livingstone, Moon Horse, and the ever faithful Tiddy the Tin Man, saving the Earth again and again from their base on the moon. Why? If they ever weren't on the moon, if, I don't know, they were, say, here, in Camden, instead, why? Why, 
By then, we would surely be doomed. <laughs> Excuse me? Good Lord! Jeffrey Livingstone! What are you doing here? It's Moonhorse. He's been... kidnapped! <laughs> then returned as an unexpected guest. Yes, we're all fully aware of that. We do not need a recap. This is not DIY SOS. <laughs> but while all that was happening, in a different yet similar place, another kind of meeting had been underway. And it went a little something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, one and all, to the annual general naughty meeting of the Mars Men of Jupiter. What is happening at pretty much the same time as that last bit just then was. Yeah, uh, alongside it, if you were. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Right, let's get going. So, uh, who's got an agenda? All of us! <laughs> <laughs> Any apologies? Never! <laughs> right! <laughs> In that case, it's time for the company song. Brilliant! We're the Mars Men of Jupiter! You think you're pretty cool? We're groovier! You got a girlfriend, you'll be losing, losing that to the Mars Men of Jupiter! Yeah, we've come for your women! We've come for your girls! We're taking your ladies! And all of your birds! Oh, we've never seen your lovers as clean as me! I wash naughty bits like you, Nick Lee! The men of Jupiter are fresh and clean, and that's what makes us sexy! <laughs> With a Mars man of Jupiter, make the stupid people look stupider. I like love gods, but Jupiter. With a Mars man of Jupiter, we've got lots of death rays, we've got loads of guns. But give us your females, females. and we'll give them some hot love. <laughs> Beneath the mask, the truth is <laughs> We're feeling quite small and insecure Because the Mars maidens of Jupiter Won't talk to us anymore They said we weren't too smelly And thick So they went to live on Venus They said We don't want your stupid jokes or your crappy dancing we have no need for your microscopic personalities. <laughs> Mars maidens come home. Mars maidens, would you please come home? Hey, hey, Mars maidens, would you please come home? Woo! Mars maidens, would you please come home? Take it, would we take it? It's true, I get a bit stinky in the area of my winky. Things can get a bit sweaty. I've got more cheese than a bowl of spaghetti. But maybe I'll change, I'll get clean. I promise I'll have a bath every week. Then I carve my heart into a bar of soap. Mars maidens, please come home. <laughs> Mars maidens, would you please come home? Oh. Mars maidens, won't you please come Home. <laughs> that is the best company song ever, 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 ever. And it leads on to the rest of our meeting when we shall sing of our evil deeds in praise of our new leader, the secret evil Empress of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Oh, yes. The secret evil Empress of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. None shall know her true identity. For at least the next 10 to 15 minutes. Take it away, Rodri. My shell surgeon. I've done something evil, the opposite of good. It was me persuaded people to order cocktails in the pub. They could have had a pint. 
it would be ten times as quick. But now they feel sophisticated, drinking penguin sick. I've done something evil, this will make you ill. It was me designed the interface for the self-service till. <laughs> Unexpected item in the bagging area. Unexpected item in the bagging area. We've done something evil. This is by far the worst. The Mars men of Jupiter have gone and walked the Earth. Thanks to our new leader, she came up with the plan. She is the evil Empress of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. We bought the Earth for Lirol, we bought the Earth for Lirol. You know the world you live on, it isn't really yours. It's been bought with race capital by good entrepreneurs. We've done something evil, oh yes! And this time, even Geoffrey Livingstone cannot stop us. Oh no, no, that was the simplest part of all. And it all happened earlier on today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, diddy, 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 it's the Mars men of Jupiter. Come on out, I can see you hiding in the moon wisteria. Oh, wise Tiddy. We do not wish to fight you. I should hope not. I'm a bit of a whiz at the old moon Tai Chi. <laughs> No, I'm sure you are, yes. 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 But tell me, is uh, Mr. Livingstone not around? <laughs> Nor uh, Moon Orbs? No, well, they're, they're still in bed. I mean, we were, we were out quite late last night, saving the Pacamax of Shack Attack from the evil zigazigars of Wu. <laughs> I did most of the actual work, of course. Oh, of course. As usual. As usual. But who is it has to get up first thing and wipe clean the moon kitchen surfaces? Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> But hold on, I've been thinking. You know that Jeffrey Livingstone song? Yes. And the Moon or Spoon or Swan. But tell me, how does your song go? My song? Huh. As if they'd let me have a song all of my own. After all, I'm only a robot. <laughs> my job is to serve. No need to think about my feelings All I'm here to do is work Because I'm only a robot And I can keep working all day No need to pay me or to train me No need for any kind of praise Go off and have your fun. Just leave me here to carry on. Don't take me with you when you go out. I'm only a robot. I don't count. I'm only a robot. Just a machine. These emotions are well, just programs. They're not real. I don't feel things like you do. So don't treat me like I can. Robots don't need fans. I'm only a robot. Just a machine, only a robot. That's me. <laughs> uh, do you have a space handkerchief? Like, just a minute. Where's he gone? And why is the door to the moon stables open? You gods, to. What's going on? 
Somebody's been fiddling with a matter transporter. Did he? Did he? They set the coordinates to Earth. Did he? Did he? Uh, where's Moonhorse got to? And what's that? That strange smell. Stale body odour and cheap deodorant. Ye gods! The Mars men of Jupiter! I think Moonhorse has been kidnapped! This sounds like a job for Jeffrey Livingston. Jeffrey Livingston. I'm Teddy! <laughs> <laughs> we thought we'd splash out with some pyrotechnics. <laughs> Excuse us for a moment, while we uh, don't set the place on fire. Everybody all right? Everybody still feel? Can you still see, can you still see us? That's the important bit. <laughs> Jeffrey Livingston. Jeffrey Livingston. And Teddy. <laughs> what was that? Quickly. <laughs> yes, Teddy, quickly. Come on, to Earth. Well, here we are on Earth, Tiddy. What do you think of it? it? It's very nice. Thank you very much for having us. Calm down. Calm down, everybody. Yes, yes, it's me. There's time for a few autographs. Form an orderly queue. What? what what's going on? No, nobody seems to know who I am. You there. Small boy. Yes. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? Just a minute. Let me think. Have you... Been in a fight. Oh yes, I've been in some fights. With your own camera crew. What? Is there a chain of boutiques selling your own lingerie and a range of perfume? <laughs> Have you been caught in bed? Bloody no, tired from my With a rugby of... league team. What? Have you got drinking sex? Something you'd like to regret on daytime TV. Daytime TV. Well, if you've not been on the telly or the entertainment news, pardon me for asking, but who the heck are you? Who the heck are you? I'm Jeffrey Livingston. Have you grim tales to tell? Oh yes, many grim tales. About your battles with booze. What? Are you the host of a quiz that's on at 20 to 6 on BBC Two? BBC Two. Have you been in a jungle? Oh yes, now you are talking. With Ant and Dick. What? Or were you by chance? Taught how to dance by Antoine Dubé. I don't know any of this. Well, if you're not on Wikipedia, MySpace, or YouTube, My pardon me for asking, but who the heck are you? Who the heck are you? Now, look here, young man. I saved the earth a hundred times with my good friend Moonhorse. But have you spoken of the secret shame of your divorce? I want alien invasions and attacks from outer space. And what's that an exclusive spread in Hello, you're in OK. In case defending humanity, can it be that no one knew? I have to say, it seems that way, because who the heck are you? Who the heck are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a personal disaster. <laughs> a lifetime of effort for no reward. Poor old you. I just don't understand it, Teddy. But hold on, look. There's a trail of acorns leading into that building. Come on, let's follow it. Saving the Earth again and again from their base on the moon. Why, if they ever weren't on their base on the moon, if just for instance they were here, in Camden, instead, why, why then, we would surely be doomed. Excuse me? Good Lord! Jeffrey Livingstone! What are you doing here? It's Moonhorse. He's been... kidnapped. <laughs> Moonhorse, Moonhorse, the greatest hero ever has ever known. Moonhorse! We've done that bit. <laughs> I know you like it, so I'll it again in a minute. <laughs> But hold on, you know who I am. Oh yes, of course, you're Jeffrey Livingston, you're Jeffrey Livingston. And Moonhorse, where's Moonhorse gone to? But then you, you don't understand. Everywhere I went, nobody knew who I was. It was like some kind of nightmarish nightmare. Why didn't you tell me all about it? I shall. For 45 years I've been in space, but now that I'm back, no one here knows who I am. Dude, what's up with that? <laughs> but hold on, you know who I am. Why, yes, Jeffrey, I do. Then tell me what's been going on. And also, who are you? I'll tell you who I am, my friend, and what's been going on. 
and Sir Wilberforce P. Partington. B.A. Holmes. <laughs> We've kept your exploit secret these 45 long years. But what about all the awards I won, like the Freer of the Year? <laughs> Well, we fake that one. We fake them all to stop you feeling sad. Even best newcomer at the Brits? Oh no, we fiddled that. <laughs> but hang on a minute, if you're here, who's guarding out of space? Who's saving us from aliens upon the lunar base? Well, no one is, but it's okay. No one will ever know. I left the kitchen light on, also the radio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Geoffrey, don't you understand? With the moon unprotected, our defenses are down. There's only one man can save us now. Jeffrey Livingstone, Jeffrey Livingstone, and Booth Halls, Booth Halls, we must find Booth Halls. Yes! <laughs> yes, we must find Booth Halls, and we think he's in this very building. What? Why on earth do you think that? Well, quite simple, really. We followed the trail of acorns, also hay, and half eaten sugar lumps. But surely, if somebody was to kidnap Moonhorse, they wouldn't leave such evidence behind. I know, that's what I was thinking. It's almost as though they tried to tidy up a bit, but not done a very good job of it. Yes, it's almost as if they hired a private cleaning contractor to tidy up for them. <laughs> yes, Tilly, it is. Do you think that might be a clue? That would be amazingly clever if it was. Well, Tiddy, you've always been so good at amazingly clever clues. Oh, why, thank you. But hold on, Minhorse clearly isn't here, so where can he be? Just a minute. If this is conference room one, there is somewhere else he could be. Where's that? Conference room two. <laughs> Brilliant, Tiddy, come on. <laughs> and it all happened. <laughs> Earlier on this morning. <laughs> Moving on to the next item of the Yes, <laughs> gods! I should have known. My arch enemy is the Mars Men of Jupiter. The very same. <laughs> well, you can stop all that swanking about now. Jeffrey Livingstone is here to thwart your efforts once again. <laughs> You're too late this time, mate. We have Moon Horse, we have the planet Earth, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's all thanks to our new leader. The secret evil Empress of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. The secret evil Empress of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. But, but, who do you mean? Who do I mean? <laughs> who do I mean? Perhaps you know me better by another name, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd get any more exciting, and then he went and did it. I'm just going to have a quick drink That's over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, now what we were doing when we were in Edinburgh, we've been up to Edinburgh, you see, and this is the bit because we were part of the Free Fringe, this is the bit where we would ask people for money. But you've already paid to come in! Those, uh, those important commercial messages. That's fine, thank you. And now, episode three, the enemy is revealed. For our younger viewers, there now follows an entirely accurate historical briefing. <laughs> Once upon a time ago, the devil came a riding to a land called Ingerland, preaching privatising. She spoke of new free markets, bringing fresh prosperity, scrapping public services, no society. Who was this right-wing ideologue? That was Margaret Thatcher. Who screwed the country quite a lot? That was Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Destroyed the rail network, sold public utilities. Turned water, gas and telecom to private monopolies. Who laid poll tax on the poor? That was Margaret Thatcher. Cranked up the coldness of Cold War. That was Margaret Thatcher. 
refusing any sanctions for supporting apartheid. Using soldiers disguised as police to break the miners' strike. Oh, but I have not rested on my laurels. No. Lots of modern evils, me. For instance, who do you think's keeping Piers Morgan on TV? <laughs> I designed Windows Vista, putting for a Change marathons to Snickers, push Rod Hole off his room. wrong with now? Down to Margaret Thatcher. Say so what you like about me, you always knew just where you stood. Up to our eyeballs in cold shine. Destroying all that's good, they call me Thatcher, Thatcher. If people made a film, I'd be lead actor. Thatcher, Thatcher. If Satan cut his thumb, I'd fetch a plaster. Thatcher, Thatcher. If hatred had a back, I'd be a chiropractor. Thatcher, Thatcher. If good was Doctor Who, I'd be the master. And I'd refer to the character as Doctor Who, as if that was his name. <laughs> Thatcher, Thatcher, if virtue was a pube, I'd be a waxer. <laughs> have been entirely different from my way of doing things since I retired, haven't they? <laughs> have they? I was being sarcastic, you plonker. <laughs> I've been in control all along, always working towards my final goal, the privatisation of the entire human race! <laughs> We're privatising everything. We're going to privatise the human race. We'll privatise the planet and the air that hangs around it. Then we'll privatise the moon and start in space. The human race's history has been a sorry tale of mismanagement within the public sector. Millennia of mistakes which will never have occurred with an accountable board of directors. If private countries could have merged instead of having wars, we'd have saved a lot of our human resources. Come philosophers, I bring glad tidings for the answer for like the universe and everything of course is. We're privatising everything. We're gonna privatise the human race. We'll privatise the planet and the air that hangs around it. Then we'll privatise the moon and stars in space. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for your bonus. Here come your new owners. I give you the Mars Men of Jupiter. Why, thank you, Mark. Why, too much. There'll be exciting changes from a thrusting new young board, which will make a real difference in the office. To increase productivity, we're slashing the workforce. You've got an ad to pack your bags, then off it. It's nothing personal. In fact, it's standard galactic business practice. Let's put it this way. You're fired. <laughs> Mr. Jeffrey Livingstone? <laughs> Dear God, you can't evict the entire human race. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, you must understand. The market has spoken. It's better for all of us in the long run if we're hurled into the unforgiving vacuum of space. Yeah, I mean, I mean to say, you're all going to be homeless soon anyway. I beg your pardon? Well, Margaret. What, you've, what we've done, you see, is we've remortgaged the Earth and used the equity raised to buy a large number of laser cannons, what we have installed on the Moon. What a marvellous example of bold free market ingenuity. Why, thank you. And what do you, pray tell, intend to do with these, these laser cannons? Why, destroy the Earth, of course! <laughs> 
Yeah, we've used the Earth as equity with which to buy laser cannons on the moon with which to destroy the Earth. And as long as the value of Earth continues to increase, as all historical trends say it must do, then we'll be able to buy more laser cannons with which to utterly destroy the Earth. Nothing, Nothing can, can go wrong. wrong. <laughs> oh, bugger. What's happened? It's all gone wrong. What do you mean? Well, apparently the, the value of Earth has plummeted due to rumours of its imminent destruction. And we are now completely bankrupt. What a completely unexpected thing to have happened! <laughs> I know. Who would afford destroying the Earth with our mixed market value? I know, I know. There's only one thing for oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, everybody. Come on. Come on. Come Let's on. all work together to put right this completely unexpected turn of events what was nobody's fault at all. <laughs> Complex times, and no one could have prophesied that our plans to strip the assets of the earth could be bad for the planet. It's not our fault, we're not to blame. In our place, you have done the same. And that's why you'll all have to pay the price of your mistakes. Cause you stood watched us, you stood by at louders. As we try to harmlessly destroy the world Who could have known such a plan wouldn't work? It's not our fault, we're not to blame In our place you've done them the same And that's why you'll all have to pay The price of your mistakes We'll all make a sacrifice We'll do the killing And you'll die Just trying to make things better And this way we'll all be all in it Together. Here's a new plan, it's cunning Give us all of your money It's the best idea we've ever had You'll have to give us what's left of your cash It's not our fault, we're not to blame In our place you've done them the same And that's why you'll all have to pay The price of your mistakes The price of your mistakes Just Hey! Gee, Dots, the people of Earth will never stand for it. I'm just going to go and ring the Earth government now, actually. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Earth government? Yeah. Yeah, no, fine, thanks, yeah. Yeah, no, anyway, I, I was just wondering, um, uh, could we have all your money, please? They'll never agree to it. They all say yes. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Livingstone, yes! You have failed! Failed completely! But, but, if I can just find Moonhorse... Oh, I can help you there! Behold! Moonhorse in chains! <laughs> <laughs> Your fine words mean nothing here, Moonhorse. <laughs> you have failed! Failed completely! Take him away! But, I don't understand it. We're... we're defeated. No, Geoffrey, don't listen to her. We can still rally people round. Everyone will want to help. Geoffrey Livingstone. But, but don't you see, Tilly? Nobody knows about us. All those adventures we had, everything we did. If nobody knew about it, what was the point? Never wanna know. <laughs> Excuse me. We never won an award. We never got on the news. We were the talk of the town. We never got a review. No photography shoots. For the cover of a fashion magazine. And if you take a look in the record books, you won't find me. Everything that we've done has been roundly ignored by the makers of taste and the style reports in a time yet to come when they're writing the history of the human race there'll be no trace of you and me but we did it anyway we were unaware much too busy having fun 
to know that no one cared because we did have some fun. Yeah, and we did have some laughs. In fact, a lot of them were best times that I ever had. All the places we went, everything that we did and we said. It's amazing to think of all the dancing and drink and all the people we met. Jeffrey, right you are. Now, as for you, Margaret Thatcher. Why? You wouldn't hit an iron lady, would you? Too right I would. Big! <laughs> now, stand back, Marsmen of Jupiter. You are defeated. <laughs> Not so fast, Jeffrey Livingstone. We still have one death ray left, and it's pointing at you. <laughs> Prepare to die. Jeffrey Livingstone! <laughs> it's Moon Horse! Ow! That's enough, Moon Horse! No! 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 Ow! <laughs> well done, Moon Horse! The Mars Men of Jupiter are defeated! Hurrah! Maybe everybody will hear about our amazing adventures. Yes, Jeffrey Livingstone and Moonhorse saving the world yet again. Jeffrey Livingstone, Moonhorse, and Tiddy, you mean? Do you mean it? Absolutely, Tiddy. This time, let's do it right. <laughs> Moonhorse, Moonhorse, the greatest hero of has ever known. With Tiddy, the Tiddy man, standing sensible, no longer alone. Saving the planet with a human companion. Stone. Now that we have saved the planet from being blown up and bankrupt by the Mars men of Jupiter. Using logic, guile and cunning, galloping and running, and a mind like a computer. <laughs> to be fair, it is a computer. <laughs> Someone say... Wait up! There's something we need to address. What was the final fate of... Margaret Thatcher, the evil empress. But it went a little something like this. Now, where are you, Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> Why, you wouldn't hit an iron lady, would you? Too right, I would. Big! <laughs> now, stand back, Mars Men of Jupiter. You are defeated. While he deals with my former allies, I shall sneak away. The better to return to fight another day. <laughs> Not so fast, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> what the? Is that? Yes, yes, it is I, Harold Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> you look different. <laughs> yes, for lo, I am dead now, and thus have changed a bit. <laughs> but anyway, lo, lo again, Margaret Thatcher. I am here to take you unto the heaven of Prime Ministers. But... Am I dead? Oh yes, that was the right shoeing you got just then. <laughs> and I'm going to heaven? The heaven of prime ministers, yes. We're all here, you know, and we're all equal. 
equal, <laughs> working together for the good of the collective, sharing everything equally forever. <laughs> no! <laughs> and you'll be sharing a room with Ted Heath. <laughs> Moon horse, moon horse, the greatest hero I've ever seen ever known. With Tinny, the Tin Man, standing sentinel but never alone. Saving the planet with a human companion, Jeffrey Livingstone. Saving the planet, moon horse, Tinny, the Tin Man, and Jeffrey Livingstone. <laughs>